Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics back with a year in words. This time it's for November. I love fall and of course this one is richly colored. I love that beautiful applique on one side and the bare paw block in an array of colors on the left side. So just like we've been doing uh, for our club, uh, you're going to be cutting your background to seven and a half by 25 and a half, laying all of that applique out. And of course, like our turkey that's got the feathers behind, if you want to have the assistance of a light box and an applique pressing mat, that's a great opportunity. And you'll be using that part of your pattern that has the layout diagram. It's not reverse for fusible applique. Of course, your kit already has all that prefused and laser cut for you. You can just peel off the paper backing, position that down, and then you get to stitch around with the amazing thread set that we've selected. Of course, that's to complete all 12 of the projects. But if you're just purchasing the individual uh, kit, we have the nice 50 weight sulky thread sets available for an individual purchase. So once you've got your applique kind of back uh, stitched down, that's all ready to go. The extra fabric that's going to be left over from that background will be used in conjunction with the other fabrics to be able to make that bare paw block. So that's going to be the primary thing we'll be focusing on today. And I'm going to give you a couple of options, three options actually, to be able to complete. These are some tiny little half square triangles that coupled up with the larger square and then another square in the corner make our bare paw block. So part of what I want to do here, really anytime we're doing a tutorial is show you how I learned, probably how you learned, and then maybe some options. You choose your favorite approach and then you can make that uh, block using that technique. So inside our pattern, we're having you cut uh, one and seven eighths inch one and seven eighths inch squares, that's hard to say, of each of the fabric, colored fabrics, as well as that kind of coffee colored. One thing I'd love to encourage you do, to do is to at least bump that up to two inches instead of cutting one and seven eighths. First off, it's a lot easier to cut a two inch strip of fabric, make a two inch square than it is one and seven eighths. And the other thing that does for you is it gives you something to square up. I always like that when the block is slightly bigger and I get to use some tools to square that up to be the perfect size going into my block. It certainly increases the accuracy of the finished block. So what I have here is two uh, two inch squares, one of the colored fabric and one of kind of that cream coffee colored fabric. I guess I call it more coffee colored. And I'm just gonna show you initially the way that you probably learned, the way that I learned and that's just to draw that line from corner to corner, and you'd be sewing on, other, on either side of that line by a quarter inch. So with the lightest fabric on top, we're just using any straight edge that we can and a temporary marking tool and trying to draw as precisely as we can from diagonal to diagonal. And of course, we're now going to take it to the machine and sew a quarter of an inch on either side. Before I head over to the machine though, I want to show you about another marking tool that has come onto the market. And I think it's a really cool option that I want to introduce to you because I know that when I have to seek a quarter inch of a seam allowance from a line, I have to be very accurate and I hope I'm getting it. So for that reason, Creative Grid came up with a seam guide. They actually have this in both the nine inch, which is what I have here, as well as for bigger blocks, they have a 15 inch. What this provides is there's a slot in the middle that I can lay this down corner to corner. And I love that they have the slot so I can see those corners very accurately. And now I simply draw on either side of that line. I could turn that spinning mat, but I've got a little bit of a limited space here. And what that does for us now is I don't have to worry about seeking the quarter and seam allowance. All I'm doing now is sewing directly on that line. And so that's another way to make a half square triangle. And there's gonna be a third approach that I'll show you in just a bit. If you feel that you need to pin, try to pin out of the way so you don't have to remove any pins. But let's go ahead and take that to the sewing machine. And what we're going to do here on this one, I'll be sewing a quarter of an inch having to seek that. Here I'll be sewing on those lines. So let's go do that right now. 
That way we can look at both of those finished. I'm actually going to remove those pins. I think they're more in my way than anything. And we can see which one, try some of each at home. See what, which method you like. Let's, here we go. You know, I might as well just sew right onto this right now since I'm here. Let's line those up here. We cut that apart. We'll start that again. For both of these, we'll just be cutting that diagonal. Of course, on this one, that's drawn. And it, while it's not drawn here, we certainly know where that is. Let's get our iron heating up as well. We'll put this aside. Aren't those fabrics are so beautiful? We have a limited amount of kits. This is a program that sold out, uh, but we just had a, a few kits uh, left over, so hopefully uh, by the time you're watching this video, if you do want to make this particular wall hanging in the exact fabrics we have here, and of course the convenience of prefused laser cut is wonderful. Hopefully we have a kit um, available for you. If we don't, or maybe you want to make that in some other fabrics, be sure to just pick up that pattern. Now that we have that um, cut apart, I like to press toward the dark side. That's just kind of my default. That's not always true. There are certain blocks where the pressing is sometimes to the lighter fabric, depending on the neighboring block. So, but if I don't, if I don't have that reference, my default is to always press to the darker side. So let's just see. I think they should theoretically yield <laughs> the same thing. Choose your way. You know, sometimes I use notions. Of course, you can imagine I'm presented with a lot of notions on a pretty regular basis. And, you know, there's some notions that I'm like, that's okay. And there's other notions I'm like, that's a great notion. We try to make sure that the ones we bring you um, on video are something we really truly use here and think are worth the investment. So that's something, please know that we, we don't just carry every notion that we're exposed to. We want to sell you things we do believe save you time and add value to your sewing. I'm trimming off this extra fabric here. And just because you don't need extra fabric, you've got enough going on, you don't need extra fabric going into your project. Remember how I said I upsize these. Instead of cutting the one and seven eighths, I went ahead and cut the two. That makes it just give me a little bit more of an opportunity to square up. So we know that if they're going to finish at one inch, as they do in this particular block, that these should be measuring one and a half inches at this point. So we could really lay any ruler on those. And you can see here, let's see how we're doing. See how we're bigger than that? What I, what I would recommend whenever I have an opportunity to square up a block here, is you want to square up something on all four sides. Don't bias your ruler so that you're like, I'm just going to trim off the two sides. I think every side deserves to be trimmed up, and that way it's a really perfect block. I'm using the advantage of I've got my one and a half, my one and a half, and I have this beautiful diagonal. I'm scooting this ruler up so that I am not against the sides. I want to be up in this corner so that I get to trim off all around. I'm going to make some space because I am going to turn this mat. So we'll start off with a nice fresh rotary blade in our rotary cutter and our line is running along our seam. We will cut and I am not going to move my fabric. I am not going to move my ruler. I'm going to rotate this because again, even the movement of fabric, the picking it up and the placing it back down can lead to fraying. It, it can lead to extort, um, kind of, uh, I can't even think of the word right now. Basically it kind of can warp it just a touch the more you handle a block, especially if there's something on bias. Um, so I love to try to not touch that. Now you and I both know that these two sides have been cleaned and those two have not. I'm gonna take this ruler 
and I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees. And now I will line that up along my two sides that we know we have perfectly clean here and here. And we're on our seam. So it gives us the opportunity now to trim up on all four sides. Now I truly have a perfect uh, half, one and a half inch half square triangle going into my project. I just increased my likelihood of my block coming out as I desire by about 100%. <laughs> so I can't endorse enough. Just upsizing your blocks whenever you can and then trimming off on all four sides. Okay, so I told you there was a third way to achieve half square triangles. What is that um, technique? You might have seen me use these on previous videos. These are called star singles. I love, again, when I can sew on a line and it increases my accuracy. With star singles, what this does for you is it actually allows you to make eight half square triangles all at the same time by layering two pieces of larger fabric. And you do have enough in your kit if you're being very careful the way you cut your background to be able to cut um, your squares. And this says a cut four inch squares. And I recommend you cut just a little bit bigger, just a touch bigger so that you're able to, let's see how big our paper is. Like our paper is about four and a quarter. If you cut your fabric so that they're just to the edge of that paper, you'll assure yourself that you're going to get accurate quarter inch or half square triangles. We'll be sewing starting here on the number one. In fact, I've already done one. Let me just show you what this looks like. It's easier to show you one. Let me put that aside for the moment here. So here's our number one. We just layered two fabrics uh, right sides together with our paper on top. You can definitely pin that. It'll keep it from adjusting um, and shifting on you. Make sure you're pinning in these open areas where your numbers are and not in your sewing track. We started number one. Definitely shorten your stitch length with this. Stop needle down. So let me do it this way. Would start sewing here. Stop needle down and I pivot here and I pivot and you keep doing this all the way around and then you just sew right off. Once you've done that, now with your straight edge, you're simply going to cut on the solid lines. Again, the spinning mat is very helpful. I'm not lifting anything up. I love that I'm kind of just rotating around the project versus lifting it up and putting it back down and it increases again our accuracy. So you keep cutting that apart until you have this. One of the nice things about shortening your stitch length is two things actually. The short stitch length will almost perforate the paper so that now when we lay it back onto itself like that, it easily just tears away. It also adds more density of thread so that when you are removing the paper, you're not unsettling the half square triangle and maybe pulling it apart. If you do use the star singles, the thing you want to remember is you're going to purchase the size of star singles as for what the finished block size is. So we know that the finished size of these half square triangles, remember how we had one and a half is going to finish at one. You're always going to buy for the size of the finished size. So in this case, you'll be picking up the one inch star singles. Now, once I have the, uh, using star singles, there is no squaring up. I love that. It saves me that step. They're so accurate that you do not need to square up. So that's the third approach to making these half square triangles. Try them all. You know, they're very affordable to buy the star singles. They're wonderful to have if you're making pinwheels. So you have a quilt that has a lot of um, half square triangles. So now we're ready to go and let's just check that with our ruler. Let's see if indeed it is measuring at a solid one and a half. Let's see here. Where's my measurement? Yep. And we're right on the money. I love that. So for me, um, what's Jen like? I like star singles. I um, squaring up is is probably my second most preferred with the first way I showed you being my least preferred where I'm having to draw the line, find a quarter inch on either side. And then my least favorite of all is cutting those to one and seven eighths. And I have nothing to square up. My blocks just don't come together the way I'd like when I can't square up. Um, so now that we have 
our half square triangles made, and we've made some more of those in advance, I want to encourage you to be sure to lay out your block. So we've got some of those made here. And we've already sewn one of the rows together. I want to definitely sew a row together with you and give you some pointers with how we can increase the accuracy of even that step of putting our block together. But it's always great to lay out your block in advance. I cannot, I'm embarrassed to admit to you how many things I've sewn together wrong because I didn't lay my block out. And I see right now, I think I like this half square triangle a little bit better. I kind of like that light color. That's what's fun about the fabrics in this kit is really like this is very different than that. I kind of like that lighter spot. So I'm gonna switch that out. Um, if you do use the star singles, this will yield eight. So you'll have two left over. So if you have one that you prefer over the other, you can switch that out the way that I did. So now we're going to be sewing this row together. So when we place this right side together, let's do that. And this side, right side together. And you know what I'm gonna do though, because it's very easy to take to actually rotate those. I've done that far too many times. <laughs> Let me do that and confirm that I'm going to be sewing this side together because you can imagine it'd be very easy to sew that side and that is incorrect. So I'm gonna place that and rotate this in front of me and similarly place that right side together and place that here. So I just wanted to point that out. It's very easy to rotate these on the way to the sewing machine and you sew the wrong side. So let's sew with a very accurate quarter inch seam. Whenever you have a seam, you have a decision to make about pressing. So you can press to one side as we have here, or you could press open. There are times where you do have, it definitely needs to be one direction or the other. And I kind of hold this open. I can see it kind of wants to go that direction. I'm gonna go with that. When my, when my fabric is very much biasing a direction, I, I'm like, that sounds like a good idea to me too. I kind of go with that. Unless, as I said, some blocks, just the way the assembly, the neighboring block may require you pushing against, uh, moving, a, moving a seam to another direction. So you have interlocking seams, or maybe it'll help the block lay a little bit flatter in the end. Let's see what this is going to do. Of course, this is going to want to push toward this block here because there's nothing going on here. Now, let's see how this is going to be assembled. That's something we need to take into account. I feel like there's no reason that can't push toward that direction. Let's do that. Let's give that a good press and relay that block out. I am the worst when it comes to sewing blocks together, you know, wrong orientation. All right, trips to the sewing machine. Let's be efficient. We know we need to join this seam and it's this one. We'll turn that. And while we're there, let's just join that as well. And let's go to the sewing machine. So let's start with this one. Now the pressing, if I just do this, it, this is a no brainer. <laughs> that fabric, there's way too much going on to press toward that side or even to consider pressing open. So we will definitely be pressing toward that big, beautiful gold square there fabric. And then for the, this side, here, which will be here. We're going to continue pressing in that direction. I like the downward. I can see the block wants to go there. So let's look at that. We certainly want to have an interlocking seam. Let's put that iron back. That seam is going down. I definitely want the seam going up. That worked out beautifully. We get an interlocking seam here. 
So as we place this right side together, this is where we're going to pin first. This is the most important uh, joining is right there and that will pin that first and then everything else needs to come after that. So if you have the habit of, of just pinning left to right, that's really a habit that won't serve you well when you're piecing. You need things, those points, you know, that's what a quilt, that's what really makes a good quilt is when the points come together. And hey, if you're, if you're fortunate enough that you don't have a, do a lot of pushing and pulling to get everything else to line up, then you'd, you've done a really good job of probably squaring up, cutting your fabrics, pressing your fabrics, etc. Now I can see that these are seams that are going to want to roll. There's things like um, the purple thing think, uh, that you could be grabbing that'll help those seams stay down. But I definitely, um, you, well, or you could sew from this side. Whatever you want to do is really going to be about the same. But if you don't want to deal with those first two, you could flip it over. But let's go ahead and sew from this side. So let's see how we did with our block. And I can see that's going to want to press again. The only, the only spot up here, it doesn't really want to go that way. We're going to make it go that way because the rest of this gets to press toward that nice uh, square right there. And we have a bear paw block. I love that. These blocks finish at four and a half inches. You can certainly check that with your four and a half inch uh, creative grid tool right there. I think we did a pretty good job of getting that accomplished. You know, if you've got just a little bit of something hanging out there on the edge, uh, by all means, you know, square that up if you need to, especially if maybe you sewed with a little bit of a scant, that's fine. You'll continue that for all six blocks. And I love that each one of those is a different kind of celebration of color. I love that. And you'll sew those together in one. Um, obviously, the arrangement is kind of right, left, right, left, or as you prefer. Maybe you want to do something different. Sew those all together and then take a measurement of what that is. That's the size that you'll be trimming your applique to. You'll join those with a long center seam and you'll be pressing those definitely toward the applique and then you'll finish your project as you would uh, like any other project. This has just a little bit of touch of hand embroidery. Um, we've got some lines that are on kind of the veins on the leaves, some eyes on the turkey and his legs. Of course, very simple, just backstitch French knots for the eyes. A really fun uh, wall hanging this month. So I'll see you soon for the year in words for December. Thanks for giving me part of your day today.